Hello viewers and welcome to yet another episode of your favorite health show, Health Hints. HIV and AIDS, the mere utterance of these terms seems to run a chill down our spine. And in a country like India, where there is so much myth and speculation surrounding these terms, there is so much stigma related to it. So to dispel the fear of these particular disease, we have amongst us today in our studio, Dr. S.I. Ahmed, Chairman, AIDS Prevention Society, and Ms. Jahnabi Goswami, who has been living with the disease for the last 15 years, and she has been the first lady to declare her HIV status. We welcome you both to our show. Okay, putting my first question forward to you, Dr. Ahmed, tell me, what are the special care, treatment, and support services that are available to HIV patients? Well, you see, uh, one has to first know about one's HIV status and how that happens. The first entry point is for people to go to the ICTC centers or to the Int integrated counseling and testing centers, which has been set up. A large number of uh, ICTCs in every district has been set up by the government. And through this integrated counseling and testing centers, one can know about the HIV status. And once a person is detected with the virus, he or she is referred to the ART centers. Okay. And these ART centers are located in the medical colleges. Okay. And these ART centers will first assess the level of immunity of this particular person who is HIV positive. positive. Uh, through a series of tests like mm. CD4 cell uh, count and other uh, vital, uh, you know, uh, various, various uh, lab tests to okay. be done. And then they'll make a decision whether antiretroviral therapy is required or not. not. This is okay. the treatment service okay. which are being provided. Okay, fine. Putting my question forward to you, Ms. Goswami, tell me, do you think such services are uniformly available all throughout India? Uh, in the one word, say no, because. Okay. Uh, uh, because still uh, the people from the rural area needs to uh, come for the central because it's a centralized, not mm. decentralized. Okay. And people come from the rural area, they have to come for the district hospitals to get the services like ICTC. And people needs who are ART, they have to come the medical college hospitals. It's uh, 300 to 400 kilometers far away from the homes. homes. So uh, communication this is, becomes the a communication become yes. the biggest problem for us, uh, especially in the northeast and people. Okay. And uh, one the things it's say uh, no, uh, government of India have to do the decentralize of the programs. Mm. Okay. You see, what she means to say about yes. is uh, now the ART centers are mostly centralized, okay. only in the medical colleges. Okay. So till a time comes when these are made available in the district hospitals mm. and also the support services for the people to come and collect them. And also the most important part is not only giving ART. Okay. ART has to be supported by a whole series of tests mm. because one has to know whether this ART is working, what is or the level of, level of yeah, I mean, what is the uh, level of uh, improvement. Okay. And for this, the vital systems like the kidney functions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the liver functions, okay. these need to be monitored very yeah. regularly and these services are all centralized okay. and to get these services also people have to come from all the rural, rural places, places which is okay. becomes very difficult this and also said. like uh, most of the people who what we see in the people like uh, they're very poor okay yes. they're not able to uh, okay. that the be that the a cost of amount who needs to okay. come like 300 400 mm. rupees in spa day and they have to wait for the night mm. they're holding the okay. night in the Gohati on some other places okay with this dr uh, ahmed a particular question comes to my mind a lot of people have this myth or notion that is hiv a different disease and is aids a different disease is it are they both related or are they both separate this is very very important because one needs to know very clearly yes. what is hiv and what is aids mm. hiv is the virus it's the organism. It's yeah. a very small organism which you cannot see with the, even with the microscope. It's yeah. very difficult. This virus is responsible for causing AIDS. Mm. AIDS is only the last stage in the whole spectrum of HIV disease. Okay. So if you have HIV, it doesn't mean that you have AIDS. Mm. AIDS will happen only when your entire immune system breaks down mm. and you are infected by a whole large uh, I mean, uh, number of opportunistic infections, which will cause AIDS. Okay. And what are the common symptoms that are that can be observed in case of a person suffering from AIDS? Uh, right. Okay. 
Now, you see, person who is living with HIV, mm. say for example, Janavi, okay. she is living with HIV, mm. she is normal, she is not having any symptoms, nothing. Okay. But there, at point of time, when the immune system breaks down, when AIDS starts developing, mm. then you have a whole large number of uh, symptoms. Mm. You may have fever, I mean, mm. it's unexplained for more mm. than about a month. Mm. You may have diarrhea, mm. unexplained for about more than a month. Okay. You'll have loss of weight. Okay. And there could be a lot of opportunistic infections like tuberculosis. In okay. India, the most important opportunistic infection why is tuberculosis okay. it could be both pulmonary tuberculosis okay. or extra pulmonary tuberculosis okay miss goswami tell me a lot of people who incur who have this particular disease they have a fear that they are going to die very soon now you have been a living example who there has been an example of 15 years you've been going forward and you have been working now with this yeah. mission view so tell me, is there any fixed duration or like it can uh, No, be because uh, that antiretroviral uh, therapy is coming mm. out. And earlier when I was diagnosed in 93, 94, that thing people are telling my life is only for seven years to eight years. Mm. And some doctors telling me my life is only for three months. Mm. Uh, but nowadays ARTS is coming out, lot of uh, research is going on. Yeah. And for this reason, I don't think so. This is only the particular reasons that mm -hmm. uh, there is a fix uh, year for Duration. the people living with HIV. Because okay. uh, I visited in the last year, uh, like US, and I met the Magic Johnson, uh, who is a basketball player. He is uh, living in the virus last almost 20 years. Okay. And this type of uh, things we have, like, and mm -hmm. people also get support from another person. So, okay. like, if you've seen the any one person who are living with the virus for mm -hmm. a long time, like, you know, that's an example. And peer support is the most important to live the okay. healthy life. Mm. This is what okay. we call uh, long-term survivors. Okay. You see, now what is yes. very important is people with HIV, with treatment, which is available, yes. can live for a very, very long time. But then, uh, Dr. Ahmed, tell me, how do people know that the treatment is being, the treatment that they are undergoing, it's helping them? Or, I mean, it's being effective enough? Yeah, I can say, I think. Okay. <laughs> She's the best person. Uh, okay. Yes, actually, best uh, because Dr. Ahmad uh, told uh, Alia questions about the city for count. That city for counts is the uh, level of uh, finding out the Indicator. like, indicators. Indicator. Like uh, where HIV is. Like uh, people started uh, ART when the city for count below 200. And they started. And... Uh, Every six months, they have to do the CD4 count, which is available on the medical college mm. hospitals. Mm. And people have to go every every six months to do the CD4 count. Okay. And that CD4 count is the indicators, the people's response, the medicines or not. Okay. But it is very careful to take medicines on the regular basis, on time and fixed time. Mm. Not to like live when single doses, okay, I forgot okay. today's morning yeah. dose, I'll like take that. him. Okay. If Evening or two hours mm. after, not like that, but it should be like it's okay. the so uh, what, adherence what is an important mess. Like okay. <laughs> exactly what I want to add to her is yes. what she talked about is adherence. Okay. You see what happens, you know, when we have a HIV positive person coming for the first time, yes, and when we and when we assess that well, this is the time when the city four has come down mm. and we do not want it to go any further because mm. we want to start or initiate antiretroviral therapy. Okay. This is the time when we start this treatment, many people you know there are a lot of side effects to antiretroviral mm. therapy. Okay. It's not that you know you could just take the swallow the tablets. Mm. Earlier you know it, the pill load was very high, okay. 15, 16 pills a day. But now the combination therapy it's is available. Standard. Yeah, it's very convenient to take. Okay. But the side effects are still very, uh, very heavy. Yeah. So this is the reason what she said. There are many people, if you can adhere to the whole regime. Yeah. You see, we have people, we have friends in the US who are living for 25, okay. 27, 28 years 20 now years. with the virus. Okay. And this is the reason, you know, what I call HIV is no longer, it, it's not a fatal disease. Okay. HIV is a chronic manageable mm. disease okay but, but i want to say like yes. in the one what uh, there's a no aids right now there's only hiv is there. exactly so but then doctor still how can one uh, stop hiv from prog progressing to aids well this is what you, you know aside how you can stop okay now suppose the reason that she has hiv yes she has not progressed to aids, AIDS. why because you see a lot of things one can take yes care of yeah this is the where the care support system comes comes you have to look for your good nutrition mm. you have to have a good medical backup to okay. test for your blood and look mm. for your cd4 counts mm. 
you have to know when you start your opportunistic infections, mm. detect them early. Mm. As soon as you are detected, yes. you have to take sufficient care and treatment for preventing those opportunistic infections mm. and then the initiation of antiretroviral therapy. Okay. Once you start the therapy, if it is taken adherence, mm. like a good time, you see, she can live a now very happy life. Okay. People also about to know uh, what is the side effect of that medicine. Because yes. most of the people are taking medicine, they don't know what is the side effect. Mm. After uh, immediate start of ART, there's a lot of side effects coming out okay. within one month. Mm. So people immediately stop that medicine mm. and they told, okay, I have this type of uh, loose muscles, diarrhea, skin disease, mm. this type of is coming up, okay. I won't take that medicine. But can a HIV positive patient, can he go for safe relationships? See you. Okay. There's but a lot of people... Uh, but then is there a risk that later on when, when the lady would be bearing an offspring, it might get contracted to the baby it's also? Oh, she uh, it's not. She's okay. talking about prevention, prevention of... Prevention of motherhood. Okay, uh, the PPTCT yeah, program. PPTCT okay, programs. now see, let me tell you one thing. The normally, if there are 100 pregnant, pregnant HIV infected mothers, hmm. then if 100 babies are born, yes. normally 25 to 30 babies would have been infected. Okay. And 75 babies would have escaped the infection. Hmm. But there are treatment now. There are two different schools of thought. One is the nevirapin treatment. Okay. One is eradothiamidin or AZT treatment. Mm. So if we give AZT, AZT and the, we call it AZT and the, the nevirapin, if you give these two treatments, any of them, not mm. both, any of the treatments, then, you know, out of this 100 infected pregnant mothers, mm. if 100 babies are born, mm. we can reduce this infection to mm. 2 to 5. Okay. This is what is possible. We can also say possible. like nevirapine only for the single dose and AGT is a long period long like period. ART. Oh, for three months. Okay. Mm. ART is like three months period. Mm. So now talking in the Indian context, tell me one thing. Is it possible for HIV positive patients to get involved with preparation of food and such other kind of I mean household activities? Uh, so because yeah, people I'm, have a uh, myth out here in India uh, especially. I'll give my example only because I'm living with my uh, parents like my mothers, my sisters, my brothers all are together and most of the time because I love to cook yeah. and I cooked for them and, yeah. uh, and this is because these are not a blood contract. Yes. If it is a blood contact, then it's going to be uh, something has happened. But because when we cooked food, it's become boiled. Okay. After boiling, it's nothing is there. Okay, fine. If something has happened yeah. also, but nothing is there. Okay. Um, but uh, now one more thing, you I have seen you getting involved with lots of shows and lots of celebrities who have been coming to raise up this particular s social issue. So tell me, have you seen that these celebrities do they are are they really involved with the social cause, or is it that just for the media hype, I mean, they come up and create a media glare. And no, then some of are really, okay. uh, they wanted to do actually. Yeah. I have seen in Assam also like people who really wants to do and they are doing it very yes. uh, nicely. I see. And people from outside, like people from Bollywood also, mm. they are really doing, some of the people are really doing uh, the good work. Mm. If I give the example like Sabana Azmin and Samila Tegers and all mm. those people, they are really doing the good jobs. Good job. They are working for the children, they are working for the other people. So in a way they are really creating a change. Yeah. In the society. Yeah, they, they are really okay. creating a change. Or these type of people's like uh, when uh, see the celebrities, people are coming to the together so with positive people, and the gen among the general people also like uh, the awareness is uh, going high generating. levels, uh, generating okay. and also is very high. Yes. Now, Doctor Ahmed, tell me what are the common vaccines that are available for HIV and AIDS patients? Well, you see, at present there is no vaccine available. Okay. But uh, there are a lot of uh, research going on, vaccine development in India also. Mm -hmm. Throughout the world, they have been trying to have an AIDS vaccine because AIDS vaccine is the only actually hope mm -hmm. for preventing HIV. Okay. In India, the first phase trial was conducted uh, and uh, 25 volunteers and it was quite successful. Mm -hmm. And we have got when a very promising... It, do you remember when was it first launched? Launched in India about seven, eight years back after okay. the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative and the NACO and the ICMR, mm. Mm. they joined. And we were a part of it as NCHI, okay. the National Coalition for Health Initiatives. Okay. And we have done uh, our part in, in, uh, in the research for AIDS vaccine development mm. in, in, in India okay. because this was a subtype C. Mm. And uh, this is what we have done through International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Mm. The encouraging news today is, which I want to share with you, 
that 16,000 volunteers are from Thailand. Okay. They have gone through the first phase and preparing for the second phase. And the second phase is pretty promising mm. in Thailand. Mm. So I think we have some hope of okay. a vaccine. Indian volunteers must also have been involved with such Indian problems. volunteers will be very largely involved in uh, Chennai mm. and also in Pune okay. in the second phase trial. Okay. Now, uh, tell me, uh, Ms. Goswami, we've seen you being involved in shows like Haat Se Haat Milao, then even in Kalyani. So, do you think such TV shows, they really promote for the social cause? Yeah, definitely, because uh, uh, people are mostly like uh, TVs, like electronic medias and the print media, and people likely to have seen the photos, not only mm. that, um, only the read. Mm. So, when the, something is published in the, like, the TV, so it's people more creative and they want to know more about this so because people like to have a serial not in the like uh, mm. tv so in the serials and mm. all those things and people like them actually this type of things and when people are seen reality not the voice yeah. and people feel more comfortable and mm. they get some information about the general people okay dr ahmed tell me it's often heard that people above the age of 50 they don't usually suffer from or they don't contract this disease, AIDS or HIV? No, is it this really? is a myth. I'm sorry, this is a myth. It has got no truth about it. Mm. Anybody of any age who is exposed to the HIV virus mm. can be infected with the virus. Because okay. only the four year to transmissions, that is not an age bar, is not there. Like uh -huh. Anybody. Okay. And one more thing. Tell me, uh, an HIV positive pregnant lady. I mean, what are the steps through which she can not pass on? I mean, positive steps and constructive steps through which she can not pass on the disease to her uh, offspring. You see, there is no way that a mother uh, can physically or, you know, doing any, any I mean, other way stop. is there any kind of medical cure Oh, that yes, has of been course. That's what yeah, I think I've already mentioned. Have. Yes, yeah. yes. Medically, as I told you, there are two medicines which I've already mentioned. Yeah. One is nevrapin, the other is hmm. AZT. Yeah. Now, if you give nevrapin uh, single dose, yeah. within 72 hours after uh, the baby is born, okay. both, I mean, to the, man, hours, to the mother, you have to hours. give at the time of labor, okay. when the labor starts. Okay. And within 72 hours, of if you baby. give two milligram per kg of body weight hmm. to the baby, yeah. orally, Okay. And then, you know, you can prevent it from 25 to 30 percent to 2 to 2 5 percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Talking in the Assam and Naughty scenario, what, uh, with societies like AIDS Prevention Society and yours, uh, Positive People's Network Society. So, what kind of measures or positive steps that have been taken towards the people of Naughty and Assam in particular? And basically, uh, both organizations, we are just running uh, like uh, all the steps together. And basically for our organizations, we are trying to develop the creating like awareness for the people mm. to reduce stigma and discrimination. We are basically work for the three levels like uh, networking, service delivery and advocacy but we are doing lot of advocacy programs like we are giving the capacity building training specially for HIV positive people so that they can strengthen their own, there is no need to get support from other persons mm. and we are giving also the positive speaking training that many people even the Doodroshan also they publish lot of story mm. like uh, positive people comes forward mm. not only myself I, alone there is a lot of people who are coming out and we are giving training for them capacity building also we are develop uh, self-help groups uh, mm. like this type of things like awareness okay. we are also doing the policy making Even we are school helping nowadays such kind of awareness programs yeah. are being yeah under schools the colleges and universities talk so there's a lot of program is going on like yeah. training programs and we always involve them and mm. the positive people also mm. the positive people go there and give the stock in front of the people people mm. who are trainer mm. and this type of things we are doing it okay. and we are also involved like uh, Global Fund, mm. the CCM is a country coin to mechanism where uh, the, the people living in HIV also is a part of this committee. Okay. Like in the state is concerned, we are calling about JIPA, greater involvement of people mm. living with HIV, where the positive people in the panel board, they are given decision, they okay. are become a decision making body processing. Mm. So this type of things people have become very yeah. taken up. So I think Dr. Ahmed wants to add to it. Yeah, yes. uh, I mean our kind of work is uh, last almost two decades we have been trying to prevent HIV in the most vulnerable groups. This is the targeted intervention groups, the targeted intervention with uh, injecting drug users, mm. the sex workers, the truckers, mm. 
and uh, all the marginalized population mm. you know that we have been working with one way is prevention and this is called targeted intervention program okay. which is behavioral change communication mm. Mm. we have got std clinics mm. we have got condom promotion programs we have got enabling environment helping self help groups among the different kind of marginalized population like sex workers we have got this uh, self help groups in guwahati okay and in the northeast uh, we have been uh, dealing mostly uh, in a large scale through our network northeast india harm reduction network with different substitution program for drug users okay. needle syringe exchange program mm. and at the policy level of course we have been working uh, right from the grassroots right to the un level okay. because organization uh, aids prevention society has been uh actually invited to the UN general assembly mm. twice in 2006 2008 okay. we take stock of the policies being taken at the UN high level meeting whether the country level you know these kind of policies are being implemented mm. or not mm. and to what level they are being implemented okay. we have got lot of policies now you see if you talk about harm reduction in the northeast we have lot of constraints and challenges okay. but if you look at the un level you know the un has already passed it then i mean harm reduction is a must yes. but if you come to the grassroots level you find that implementation becomes very difficult mm. like ost if you talk about oral substitution treatment for drug users mm. now northeast is one area where maximum number of hiv is detected Detective. among the injecting drug users yes. now how do you deal with this such kind of a situation now even new drugs are coming like methamphetamine Okay. ASTs I mean like amphetamine type substances mm. AST, ATS mm. so these are very very difficult situation in the northeast and in the coming days if we do not address these issues it. very urgently mm. you know I I am afraid that the, the 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 drug scenario will become yeah, very very worse, worse. Okay. and this is a cyclical phenomenon mm. you see our prevention has worked let me yes. tell you in Manipur yeah from a situation where almost 93% mm. of the drug users were HIV positive that has been brought down to about now uh, 23 24% and okay. it has come down even to 17 okay. but to sustain that is very difficult mm. unless we have very effective policies mm -hmm. and these policies must be in place otherwise we are going to have the same cycle of reinfection again okay. because relapse rate is very very high mm. 93% relapse rate and we lack proper rehab programs at the northeast okay now finally tell me what should be the outlook of the general people towards people who have been affected by hiv and aids uh now is little bit changed not we can, yeah. we can we cannot say that it's a 100% changes yeah. but the, uh, we can say almost the 60% changes as people mindset yes. and people are now accepted even that not only that family members earlier yeah. just family members also not accepted but still uh, like uh, like in laws is not supported yeah. we can say that almost 80% in laws is not mm. supported uh, that uh, the this thing, part yeah, yeah in the daughter in law yeah. but the family is supported that we are getting support from the communities mm. and all but uh, we cannot say that i am living with the virus mm. but uh, that some other persons cannot say but people knew that that person is positive but uh, the in front of that they cannot talk Mm. about the situation because okay. self stigma is very mm. high till today mm. Mm. i see yes dr ahmed you see um, my message would be very clear they like reach out to as many people as possible and give them the correct information mm. that how hiv spreads you see it doesn't spread by normal behavior you know awesome i mean just by, by touching, touching, yeah. touching touching and liking by by, by yeah. touching her <laughs> it doesn't like touching yes. and all that so so one should possible. be very careful i mean like you know like Uh, any kind of uh, any kind of behavior yes. if which could put you at risk this must be known okay then only you can prevent prevent it. and and this must be told uh, very to clearly yeah uh, of course with globalization of course people's concept and way of thinking has also changed to a lot extent i think and exactly. that also help it up like electronic and print media and help media. a lot yes Okay. Both. The Not media has got a media very important role media has a big yes. role of media of course has yeah. a great important role to play in this regard Yes finally so viewers we see that basically it's upon us prevention it's al already been said that prevention is better than cure but now of course medical treatment is being taken up to a great extent it's gearing up and taking up steps in prevention of this particular deadly disease that is that it's being considered but of course with a little bit of love with a little bit of care we can of course make a great difference to people suffering from this particular disease so that's all a little
necessary for such people. With this, we come to the end of today's discussion. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, and thank you, Ms. Thank Goswami, you. for enlightening us with your uh, valuable opinion and views on the topic. Thank you, viewers, for watching our show. Thank you. Thank you.